Hey everybody, it's your boy Zero here for another Gunplay Review. In today's episode, we're going to cover the Quibbly Cubly from Zeta Gundam, or Double Zeta Gundam. I think it's from Dimble, Double Zeta Gundam to be accurate. Because I remember the final, if you want to call it the final boss of that being the O of Zeta Gundam, so I'm going to go with this being Double Zeta. I picked up this dude a long, long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. So I believe I got this off of Amazon, but I can't be 100% sure. And I'm not 100% sure if our friends at Galactic Toys has it. So if they do, be, I recommend ordering it. And if they don't, be careful of scalpers on Amazon, eBay, you know, like people who jack up the prices for stuff that really shouldn't be that expensive. With that being said, this is honestly one of my favorite non- Gundam grunt suit uh, command units, not to confuse, but don't get me wrong, the Sininju and the Sazabi are number two, one and two, and the Sazabi Stein is third place. This is like top five at that minimum, because I like how unique it looks. So let's get into the review itself. Okay, so as you know, this is a backlog episode, so it doesn't I don't have everything that comes with it, but it did come with a sheet of stickers, which I found kind of weird. Well, it's not a huge sticker, if I remember correctly. Yeah, I think it was just the eye. The eyes. See? Because it actually has two eyes, which is, you know, usually a Axis or a Xeon suit usually has only one eye, but this, this dude had two, which that's why I like them. It came with, I believe, two beam sabers. I only have the one here. Unfortunately, it broke while transferring from my my cabinet when I kept all my excess Gundams, hence the beam saber. But it did come with two beam effects because you can actually put the beam effects in the hand. And the sabers, I do believe, go in the arm. Let's test that, that theory. I could be, yep, it does. Go like this. Beam Saber and R, which is pretty cool. It came with, a, I believe, at least one, obviously, dynamic hand and two holding hands. There is no beam weapon that came with it, so, you know, like no beam rifle, which kind of sucks, but it can use, it can also, I think it can fire beam of, beams out of his hands. And if not, well, the giant back skirt full of funnels says otherwise. So, yeah, I don't think it's going to be hurting for long range weaponry. Alright, so. Uh, I hate. One, one thing about messing with these older kits I have. <laughs> the dust really messes with my finances. Alright. Hold on. Okay. So let's do the articulation. Let's off the head. There and there. That's all you get. It's easy to pop off, which is a downside, but. Back that up a little. There it is. There you go. But yeah, you really don't get any articulation with the head, which is kind of sad. It has no neck. It legitimately has no neck. That's the arm fully bent. Socks. Arm all the way out. Good. 360 rotation there. Yeah, the hand, if I remember those dynamic hands are very similar to our Master Greed's hand, so you do have cool options like that. The holding hands were obviously the sandwich style, so not that complicated. Shoulder armor, you can move independently. I do like it how it's the inverse of each other, like stripes, blue, 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 stripes. I think that, I thought that was pretty neat. But that's just me. Knee bend. Pull turn on the knee. Bends up, down. That's all you get. Foot goes down. Not bad. Up. Left, right on the ankle. Sides kick out. Not that bad. It could be worse. No front skirt per se. This technically, if you classify this as a front skirt, we got that little thing. That's as far as the legs go up. Knee bend. Pretty good, and you can actually stab somebody in the face with this knee. So, with that being covered, oh, you gotta do the ab crunch. 
it goes up. It doesn't crunch down. And of course, skirt goes up. Backpack slash skirt, back skirt goes up and down. And of course it has the pile of verniers on the back of the legs. So, with that being said, this isn't a bad kit. It's very solid, but like I said, when I, since I moved it, it broke the beam saber broke off out of the you know handle. You have to be careful while transporting these things; they could break quite easily. Aside from that, I do kind of wish they had a beam weapon, like a well, other than the funnels, like a beam rifle. But maybe because I'm just so adjusted to having beam rifles and a lot of mobile suits, you know. If it's not a hand-to-hand -hand mobile suit, at least give me a gun of something. A funnel just seems kind of redundant at this point. But it's not all in all bad. So, it's something. But if I had to say anything about it, it has, like, the coolest presence on a shelf. Like, a lot of mobile suits, especially Gundams and Grunt suits, start to blur together because they try to keep all the designs to look similar. I do like it when they go a little off-kilter and just make something look completely original. Maybe that's why the Moon Gundam is cool to me, the Strike Noir is cool, this dude is awesome looking to me. Like, they decided to go completely off-cuff with this thing. So, if anything, you don't even need panel lining on this thing, which is pretty cool. I mean, it could help, but really, it's not necessary. You do have to be careful with the seam lines, though, right here. This is a bad one. So, you may want to seal that bad boy up. But if you saw, if you just press it real tight, you have to get really close to see it. It'll fall away. No one's going to notice it. This is great. A great form of technology they put in this dude. I wish they put it in a lot of kits that have mostly white. And Gundam shouldn't, like the Gundam franchise should not be afraid to throw in more unique designs. So let's just get to the summary and wrap up this for you. Okay, so all in all, yes, I would recommend the Cubely, Quibbly, whatever, from Dable Zeta Gundam. And, oh, here's a little fact I didn't mention before. Yeah, each of these funnels, you can pop out. So if you have a stand that you can put all these little dudes on, you can literally do a full-on funnel attack, which is pretty cool. But with that being said, yes, I would recommend it. It's a very nice build. It's unique looking because we need more unique looking mobile suits. That's not sarcastic. That's just fact. Uh, you know, this kind of reminds me of something from like IBO, something, you know, drastically different looking than most standard mobile suits. And... On one hand, I get it why the mobile suits look so streamlined and similar. They come off of a factory in-universe. So they have to be similar so they can, you know, replace parts. And the Axis and Titan have a bad habit of, you know, making random prototype suits and said, Good luck, everybody. You know, maybe that's why the Titans lost the war. But that's, you know, either here, there, and technically everywhere. I mean, that's why Xeon lost the war. They kept using prototype suits and sending new kids in them. And they all got slaughtered. But that's either here nor there. Back to my opinion on the Gumpla here. Yeah, I say get it. Good design. Solid build. Solid in general. Be careful while moving it, though, because the beam sabers are fragile around the tip of it. Basically, the plug where you plug it into the saber is not that strong. So it can break off on you. But outside from that, it looks great. I personally enjoy the build. If you like Xeon or Axis or Titan style, you know, prototype suits and the like, I say go for it. If you like new type suits, I say go for it. They're all unique. And yeah, so... Uh... I know I recently just posted up that I wasn't going to do a video for, the, for a while. I felt that I should get this video out while I still have some type of mental strength in me. So this is going up tomorrow. And I'm going to take a break for a week. Maybe feel better after that. After that, I'm going to do 
the high, the new Gundam and the Stark Jigen. Stark Jigen would probably be on a Monday, and then the new Gundam would be on a Friday. And yeah, so I want to thank everybody for supporting me, being here for me, and I hopefully I can get out of this excuse me this spiral faster than you know normal. And I apologize for the next couple of days, the next week being out of lack of videos. So thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to support the channel. Use the links down below. That would really help the channel and me. And yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.